think we have 28 people here. So we, if we don't have everybody, but we're very close. So um, I'm going to call this meeting to order. Can we just confirm that Rebecca's recording? At 10.01, yes, I was looking for that in the, in the little corner. Um, so we are called to order at 10.01 um, on April 14th, 2021 for governing board. And Beth, if you could call roll, that would be great. I'll go by library name if you could just state your first and last name. Algonquin. Uh, Sarah Murray here. Carrie. Diane McNulty. Crystal Lake. Catherine Martins. Miss Flames. Joe Bonell. Ela. Lauren Rosenthal. Evanston. Karen Danzeg Lyons. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Fox River Valley. Roxanne Bennett. Good morning. Fremont. Hi, Scott Davis here. Blanco. Andy Kim. Glenview. Lindsay Dorfman. Grays Lake. Good morning, Sarah Brown. Highland Park. Heidi Smith. Huntley. Frank Novak. Indian Trails. Brian Shepard. Lake Forest. Lake Forest. Come back. Lake Villa. Mick Jacobson. Lincolnwood. Lincolnwood. McHenry. Leslie Jakaki. Martin Grove. Pam Luffler. Niles Main. Cindy Rademacher. Northbrook. Kate Hall. Palatine. Palatine. Park Ridge. Park Ridge. Prospect Heights. Alex Todd, and I miss Andy's beard. Round Lake. This is Jim D. Donato from Round Lake. Well met. Anthony Austin. Winnetka. Winnetka. Zion. Barnett Miller. Go back to Lake Forest. Lincolnwood. Palatine. Park Ridge. Angela Berger for Park Ridge. Thank you. And Winnetka. Let's see if we've got in the chat. No. Okay. All right. I think we're good, Sarah. All right. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. I spoke too soon. I apologize. For CCS, we have Rebecca Melanowski, Beth Stombrenner, and is Deborah on? I'm here. Oh. Thank you, Deborah. Sorry about that. Um, excuse me if I if I may. Uh, my assistant director is going to be joining us. She's having a little technical trouble, but I have to leave at eleven. Uh, so if the meeting is still continuing at that point, there she is, Becky Ingram. Yeah, okay. I'm here. We'll be in the in the lurking in the shadows until I leave. Uh, if that's okay with everyone, thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Welcome. Uh, okay, we'll keep an eye for Lake Forest, Lincolnwood, Palatine, and cut to see if um, somebody shows up from those libraries. Um, do we have any additions to the agenda? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on. Um, public comment. Um, I know we have some alternates here and uh, and Becky's joining us, but other than that, do we have any anybody else from the public who wants to say anything? Okay, uh, then we will move to the consent agenda. Uh, we have four things on consent agenda, meeting minutes from January 13th, financial statements and bills for payment from March of 2021, and executive committee and governing board meeting schedule. Um, does anybody want to discuss anything or uh, would somebody like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented, Kate Hall Northbrook. Okay. This is Brian Shepard, I'll second. Thank you, Kate and Brian. And Beth, if you can do a roll call vote, please. Algonquin? Yes. Carrie? Yes. Crystal Lake? Yes. Miss Plains? Yes. Hila? Yes. Evanston? Aye. Fox River Valley? Yes. Fremont? Yes. Blanco? Yes. Glenview? Yes. 
Gray's Lake? Yes. Island Park? Yes. Lee? Yes. Indian Trails? Yes. Lake Forest? Lake Villa? Yes. Lincolnwood? McHenry? Yes. Morton Grove? Yes. Niles, Maine? Yes. Northbrook? Yes. Palatine? Sorry. Park Ridge? Yes. Prospect Heights? Uh, aye. Thank you. Round Lake? Yes, aye. Wilmette? Yes. Winneka? Zion? Yes. Beth, I didn't. Um, I didn't hear audio from Josephine, but she, Lincoln Wood has arrived. So, okay. Yeah, Thanks. sorry, I was having technical difficulties. I still can't get my video to work. <laughs> sorry, but yeah. Thank you. Welcome, Joe. All right, um, consent agenda is complete. Next we have business. Um, we have re uh, recommendations from three committees, budget and finance, nominating and long range planning. Um, and it is my understanding that the chairs of those committees will be presenting for each of their committees. So um, first up, we have recommendation from budget and finance committee regarding the fiscal 21-22 budget. And Mick, that is you. Sure, um, everybody got um, Rebecca's well-written um, brief summary, as well as the um, much less brief um, spreadsheets. Essentially the budget is not changing very much. Um, there's a few adjustments as she's noted and the, um, the pricing to the libraries, um, there is, it, we're using the same formula, 75, 25%, um, as was established a couple of years ago. The um, only real difficulty that we're facing is that Lake County has been very late in um, releasing information about income um, for next year, though I think we may have, are you, Rebecca, have you heard from them? Uh, Beth just received the response to our third FOIA this morning, <laughs> um, and we do have the updated data, so I can be working on that um, anytime. Right. So that might be um, some minor adjustments in, in cost for CCS, but very minor, I think. So that is essentially where the budget and um, cost is. Were there any questions on that? If you read the minutes um, of the in the the packet, you'll see that there was other things that the budget and finance committee um, meeting group um, has really talked about. Um, probably the um, one of the things is that we've started the live CCS hasn't been doing rebates for very long, to my knowledge, and so there really hasn't been a system on how we're going to use the development fund, um, how what level. So we decided that between seventy, we want the development fund to be funded at 75 to 150%. Um, that allows us to have room for us to um, do these, you know, website, other um, building moves and stuff like that. So it's funded well, but not overfunded. And so we won't have to get to a place where we have to do significant rebates. At this point, I think it was 49,000 or something like that. Dollars. We were about $49,000 over 150%. So we are planning to use that as the, the amount we will rebate next fiscal year. It's next fiscal year, right? And um, so that that was the reasoning behind that. I don't know if there's any questions or comments on that decision making. That will be going to the executive board for approval as a recommendation from the budget and finance committee. We also call that the um, Lauren Rosenthal uh, metric, the 75 to 150%. So you can call it that if you if you desire. Um, the other thing, Rebecca, I don't know if this is the right time to talk about this, is we've been talking about, there's Rails has um, provided the, the I don't remember the name of the grant, um, but they provide that grant, but they're using a different sort of metric um, for it. So they are using more of an equity, be, equity lens when they are providing monies to us. So a library under a certain rate would, the CCS gets, let's say three or $4,000, while a library that's very well funded might only get $1,800. And they also to CCS. So we are recommending that those funds be distributed as Rails distributes them to us. Um, I'm not sure who, the final decision-making authority on that. And we're still getting all that information from Rails. So we don't have as much information, but we're thinking that is, we wanna follow the, um, the guidance of Rails and we wouldn't have gotten the extra money if it wasn't 
because Rails use that system. So we feel like that makes the most sense. The other kind of thing we've been talking about, and again, I can't remember if this is, goes to governing board or if this goes to executive board, is um, when we do the rebates, the $48,000, we are recommending that it be based on the percentage of, of paid. We've been kind of doing it all even, Stephen, um, where everybody gets the same amount. But um, now that we've kind of established that, like if somebody puts in 5.2%, they should get 5.2% of the $48,000. If somebody else puts 3.8% in, they will get the 3.8% back. Um, this was all very new when we did it before and it made sense. But if this is something we're going to continue to do, we think that is, again, the fairest way while also doing uh, using the equity lens for the Rails um, grant. Rebecca, did I miss anything or anybody else on the committee? Did I miss anything that um, we should share with the governing board? Uh, no, I'll just clarify that both of those um, sort of revised metrics or distribution options will go to governing board in July. Um, so you'll be able to see what that looks like um, and hopefully approve the, the change in distribution model. And that will go into effect for next fiscal. Um, so, so any remaining rebates this fiscal will be under our current model of divide it all. So FY23. 22. 22. It would go into effect. So next fiscal, approving in July, going into effect, that fiscal year then? Yeah, so the Rails grant will still plan to distribute quarterly. Um, so we'll get that for, we, we'll probably get that first quarterly check from Rails in July, but we'll just wait until after governing board to, to disperse the funds to make sure that we're doing it in accordance with governing board's wishes. And then any CCS rebate won't be until the end of the year anyway, so. Okay. And since we already made the, I mean, I would presume that this, yeah, this makes total sense. And that when we first got the Rails grant that we, um, the libraries that paid more than 3%, I think it was of their operating, that we would give them that additional money. I think that there were two or three libraries that get it. Um, that, that was kind of the first step down this kind of equity lens, land, you know, path that this kind of just increases that, which I think is awesome. So, yay. So are you looking for a recommendation, Mick? Yeah, I would, um, but not to step on Sarah's toes, but um, we, the Budget and Finance Committee, feel like the, the budget and the, um, the fee structure that will be updated um, when, the new, when the new numbers are able to be baked in, we're ready for that motion for if somebody would like to make it. Is there a recommendation already from the committee though? So then we don't yes, need a second, page, right? Page 13 of your packet. Right, yes, so we don't right. need a second. We just have the recommendation. Okay, so I don't need to say anything. Someone just needs to call the vote. So this is on the budget, not on the discussion we just had. Yes, this is on the yeah. budget. Yeah, okay. So so the if the motion is coming from the committee, we don't need a second at all? Oh, I was that, That's right, but you should, but you should, read the motion before right. we do a vote. Okay. I knew we were missing a piece. Well, I'll, I'll make the motion since I'm the chair of the budget committee. Um, we recommend to the governing board to approve the fiscal year 21-22 budget as written and the fiscal year 21-22 member fees as estimated. Okay. Can we get a roll call vote, please? I'll start with Lake Villa. Yes. Lincolnwood. Yes. McHenry. Yes. Morton Grove. Yes. Miles, Maine. Yes. Northbrook. Yes. Palatine. Yes. Park Ridge. Yes. Prospect Heights. Dollar Dollar Bills. Yes. Round Lake. Yes. Wilmette. Yes. Winnetka. Zion? Yes. Algonquin? Yes. Terry? Yes. Crystal Lake? Yes. Miss Plains? Yes. Hila? Yes. Evanston? Yes. Fox River Valley? Yes. Fremont? Yes. Blanco? Yes. Glenview? Yes. Braisley? Yes. Island Park? Yes. 
Lake. Yes. Indian trails. Yes. And Lake Forest. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mick. Thank you, board. Uh, next, we have on the agenda uh, recommendations from the nominating committee regarding the FY 21-22 elections. And Kate, that's you. That is me. So the nominating committee met. The slate of officers was um, in your packet. We are recommending Heidi Smith as president-elect. Um, Diane McNulty to continue on as secretary. You may recall that when Jane Conway retired um, this past year, uh, Diane stepped in um, and was appointed to fill out the remainder of Jane's term. Um, so like, I think just a little under a year. Um, and then Brian Shepard as a new member of um, the executive committee serving as a member at large. Um, with Rebecca's um, imminent arrival of Rebecca 2.0, um, I don't know, do we have, do we have a nickname? For the child? Um, it's a long story, but it's Marlet. Um, Marlet. Okay. It's so, a gender neutral name. I love it. My 10 year old niece. Okay, so with the imminent arrival of Marlet, um, we wanted to provide as much continuity as we could in this coming year with the executive committee, with COVID still happening. Um, so we didn't really shake things up very much with the slate, but feel that this is, um, we have a strong executive committee and this will ensure that we can get through the remainder of COVID um, and, and help all of those new directors that will be coming in. We have a number of new directors joining CCS um, not because of new libraries, but just because of staff turnover. Um, so this is the slate that we are presenting. I'd be happy to answer any questions. The minutes were included as well. Kate, could you uh, fill us in on who all will be on executive committee? In other words, those that are continuing and who's moving into the president slot? Yeah, so Pam Leffler, so Sarah is, of course, our president right now, so she'll be moving into the past president spot, obviously. Um, I will be going off of the board because I am the past president currently. Pam will be moving into the president spot, and then Heidi will be moving into the um, um, sorry, president-elect spot. My brain is not working super well today. Um, and and then we would, um, Mary, was, I'm like, can I, can I help you yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, guys. My brain just, this is my <laughs> third meeting today and it's just not going well. My brain is stopped. Um, yeah, so it, it would be Pam Leffler as president, Sarah Murray as uh, past president, Mick Jacobson as treasurer, Anthony Austin member at large, and then the, the, the new members as listed in your packet. Um, Heidi Smith, Diane McNulty, and Brian Shepard. Thank you. Thank you for saving me there, Rebecca. Um, any other questions? So, of course, there can also be um, nominations from the floor. We hope that you'll you know, obviously um, approve of the slate that the nominating committee is recommending, but this is a democratic organization and that is of course always allowed, um, but this is our recommendation. So we don't officially need a second unless there is of course a recommendation from the floor. Um, anyone for any of the three positions for the president elect secretary or member at large. Okay, if nobody has um, additional nominations, then we will go to a roll call vote, please. Yeah. I'll start with Northbrook. Yes. Palatine? Yes. Park Ridge? Yes. Prospect Heights? I voted yes. Round Lake? Yes. Wilmette? Yes. Mecca? Zion? Yes. Algonquin? Yes. Carrie? Or Diane Carrie? Yes. Thank you. Crystal Lake? Yes. Displains? Yes. Hila? 
Yes. Evanston? Yes. Fox River Valley? Yes. Fremont? Yes. Blanco? Yes. Glenview? Yes. Grays Lake? Yes. Hunt Highland Park? Yes. Huntley? Yes. Indian Trails? Yes. Lake Forest? Lake Villa? Yes. Lincolnwood? Yes. McHenry? Yes. Morton Grove? Yes. And Niles Main? Yes. Thank you. Congratulations to our newly elected committee members. And thank you to the people who have served on the committee before who are getting a break. All right. Um, next up, we have um, the recommendation from Long Range Planning Committee regarding strategic plan year one implementation. Um, and that will be presented by Pam as the head of Long Range Planning. So um, I'm going to apologize in advance. We're having some construction work done and it's quiet right now, but I'm hoping it stays that way. But in case it doesn't, you may hear some noise. <laughs> so my apologies for that in advance. Um, this is also my third meeting. So I'm going to just read from some notes that I made regarding our, um, our recommendation to the board. Um, in January, which feels like a million years ago at this point, um, we did approve the 21 through 24 strategic plan. Um, we identified several uh, broad strategic directions with the idea being that each year CCS staff with input from governing board, member libraries, et cetera, would um, develop specific annual goals. So um, the strategic directions and goals document reflects those goals that Rebecca and her staff uh, created for the first year. And they felt that those uh, projects were achievable with the current staffing levels and with the current funding as outlined in the budget that we just approved. So the one thing that Rebecca did note that might um, impact some of the attainment of those goals is uh, when and if Warren Newport will join CCS. Uh, if they join in 2022, Rebecca and her staff have already identified priorities of those goals that um, they still feel they could, they could do uh, with the staff time that would be required to, to get Warren Newport on board. So those are in italics on that strategic direction and goals document. And I believe in the implementation notes, they're already, um, she's listed those out as well. So we met on the 25th of March, uh, the Long Range Planning Committee to review those, uh, the directions and the goals, the specific annual goals. And we agreed that they were reasonable and appropriate for the upcoming year. Um, we noted that a number of those projects had already begun, which was really bodes well for the future of getting them achieved this year or for next year. Um, and that was important, uh, both because Rebecca is gonna be gone for a while and then um, with pandemic, who knows, right? So um, there was some discussion about the uh, data gathering and analysis section of the goals. Um, but in the end, the, the committee agreed that, you know, with the, with the goals as outlined by Rebecca and her staff. So um, kind of a quick overview of what the past few months have been. Does anyone have any specific questions for either me or Rebecca or her staff about those? No? Um, so, as we have been doing um, with that, uh, we recommend that the governing board accept the uh, fiscal year 2021 to 2022 strategic goals and direction, strategic direction and goals as presented. Okay. Um, it doesn't sound like there's any questions or discussion. So let's go ahead with the roll call vote, please, Beth. Okay. Let's start with Morton Grove. Yes. <coughs> Sorry, Niles Main? Yes. Thank you. Northbrook? Yes. Palatine? Yes. Park Ridge? Yes. Prospect Heights? Yes. Round Lake? Yes. Lumet? Yes. Winnetka? Zion? Yes. Algonquin? Yes. Cary? Yes. Crystal Lake? Yes. Desplaines? Yes. Gila? Yes. Evanston? Yes. Fox River Valley? Yes. Freeman? Freeman? Yes. Thank you, Scott. Glencoe? Yes. Glenview? Yes. Grays Lake? Yes. Island Park? Yes. Huntley? Yes. Indian Trails? Yes. Lake Forest? 
Thank Bella. Yes. Lincolnwood. Yes. And McHenry. Yes. All right. Thank you. Um, next on our agenda is uh, Innovative Development Partner Program. And Rebecca, I believe this one is on you. Yes, I have a brief update and then I'll actually turn it over to Deborah for some more information on the project plan. Um, we have not yet signed the SAS agreement with Innovative as we previously discussed. We are still working out on, on some language. Um, most recently, uh, Dennis Walsh from Kleinthorpe Jenkins, our attorney, and I met with the Innovative staff attorney um, via the phone, obviously. Um, to go over our remaining concerns on the contract and almost everything has been ironed out. The remaining issue is um, having the CEO approve a cancellation for convenience clause in the SAS agreement. When we originally agreed to be a part of the program, um, it was presented to us that like we'll be in the program and then you know if and when the the product is ready for us, then we'll go live. And if we never wanna go live, no harm, no foul. Um, and then they presented us with the SAS contract a year before the product's gonna be ready for us to go live, which doesn't have a cancellation agreement. So um, we, I think have thoroughly explained our concerns to Innovative at this time. The attorney says, yes, that makes sense. I understand why you feel that way, but I need to get approval for this. So I'm still waiting for that. Um, once that is approved, um, I don't see any more roadblocks. Um, previously, we've been approved by governing board to sign the contract when the president, attorney, and I are happy with the language and feel that CCS is adequately protected. So hopefully <laughs> that will be signed by our next meeting. Um, but regardless of the, the status of the SAS contract, we are still moving forward with um, everything. Um, we, I did note in your packet elsewhere in the innovative updates, um, we have not, we were planning to upgrade to the next version of Polaris um, 6.7, uh, like now in April. Um, however, there is a bug in it that um, would create massive performance issues for us. So we will not be upgrading in April. Um, we do need to be on 6.7 in order to work with Vega Discover. So our training database is on 6.7. So Deborah will talk through um, what our project plan looks like. Um, despite the our inability to upgrade right now, um, we are on track for the project plan that Deborah is going to show you. We are planning to upgrade to, to 6.7 in June. Um, when they anticipate a fix will be in place, they've identified the issue and are working on development and testing now. So um, we really appreciate our colleagues at another consortium who flagged this issue for us um, and made sure that we didn't get in the same pickle that they're in. So um, unless there are any questions about the contract, I will turn it over to Deborah to walk you through what it will actually look like for us to be a member of the, of the development program. There are no questions. Um, I will go ahead and share my screen. I have a brief PowerPoint to share with the group. Give me one minute. Hopefully you can see my screen. So as Rebecca said, I'm gonna provide a brief overview of our plan timeline for the Vega Partner Program. We've broken down the project into three phases that will run through March of 2022. Planning and kickoff, our Vega soft launch, and then general availability and potential go live. We're currently in the beginning phase of the project, which is planning and kickoff. During this time, CCS is attending development partner meetings with Innovative every two weeks. At these meetings, Innovative demos, new project features, and development partners provide feedback um, and ask questions of the Innovative team. CCS is currently working, as Rebecca alluded to, um, with the Innovative team to plan for implementation of our Vega instance. 
So because of our issues with the 6.7 upgrade, we are planning two separate implementations of Vega. One against training, which is currently on 6.7, and then one that will come later, um, which will be syncing up with our production database in July. During this time, we're also working internally to establish our strategy for gathering patron and staff feedback. In the next month, um, CCS will send out a call for volunteers to serve as beta libraries for Vega. Beta libraries will adopt Vega at their in-library OPEX in the next phase, which I'll talk about in just a minute, and they'll assist CCS with user testing and gathering patron feedback. Um, and of course, today, Rebecca will present potential rollout options so that we can start our governing board discussions of what a Vega rollout in 2022 will or could look like. So in July, we'll move into the second phase of the project, which is our Vega soft launch. During the soft launch, um, CCS will receive a Vega Discover instance that is syncing against our production database. So this Vega Discover instance is going to run in parallel to PowerPack. So we'll essentially have like two discovery interfaces that are running against our live database. Once we have our Vega instance set up against production, Innovative will host an introductory webinar and demo for all of our members so that we can familiarize ourselves with the product. And CCS will begin creating our training documentation um, and sharing that out with staff. During this time, we'll also begin testing with both patrons and with staff, and we'll continue to troubleshoot bugs, issues, um, and report them to Innovative as we move along in this phase. Now during this phase, our beta libraries will begin using Vega as their primary discovery interface within the library. They'll also help us recruit patrons for usability testing, and they'll help us um, gather other patron feedback as needed. So we're still working out the details of what that will look like, and we'll have more information um, to share out about that when we send out our call for volunteers in the next month. At our October meeting, um, governing board meeting, this group will discuss the criteria for accepting Vega as our primary discovery solution. Um, in other words, they'll, you will determine what the criteria we will use to determine if we want to make the move away from power pack to Vega. So we'll start that those discussions in October. Phase three will begin in the fall, sometime around October, November. And during this last phase, CCS will of course continue to participate in ongoing testing and develop with Innovative. Um, as Rebecca alluded to in your packet, development for Vega is iterative. So Innovative releases product updates at least one, once a month. So we'll see ongoing updates as we move along in the project. And then we'll continue to see additional updates to Vega even after um, we would go live on the product. If needed, CCS will conduct additional user testing there, during this phase and will continue to gather feedback from staff as needed. We will work to compile the feedback we've gathered into a recommendation for this group. In January, Governing Board will vote on whether to accept Vega as our primary discovery solution and pending that, that vote and our decision on how we would want to roll out the product to members, we'll begin our move to Vega in March. So with that, I will turn it back to Rebecca and answer any questions if you have them. Are there any questions for Deborah on, on that timeline? I don't have a question on the timeline. I was just curious, how many beta partners do you think you're going to be looking for? We think that we will be looking for four for beta partners. Um, for our, like our lab usability testing, which will be virtual, we're hoping to get eight patrons. So that would be two patrons from each of our four beta testing libraries. Okay, any other questions or? Okay, um, then if there's no questions for Deborah, I wanna talk about rollout options before we move on. Um, so as Deborah indicated, um, we have some options for how we can, assu assuming we decided to move forward with Vega Discover, we have some options for how that will look. 
Um, a major consideration is that per our contract, we will start paying our, our full Vega fee when the first library goes live in a production environment. So um, like if Kate's super pumped and on January 1 is like Northbrook's going live on Vega, see you later CCS, all of our, like that's your, one of our contracts starts then. So I do think it's important that we consider what that looks like because with any um, piece of technology, we always have the, like the standard adoption curve. We've got our early adopters who are really excited and wanna be on the cutting edge and like do the thing. We've got our big hump of the bell curve, which is most of us that are like, let someone else be on the bleeding edge. And then we'll hop on when it's like still cool. And then we've got our tail end of folks who, you know, need more encouragement to, to start a new product. So um, in talking with Innovative and CCS staff and learning more about the, um, the rollout process for Vega, like how to do the configuration and setup, um, we do recommend that we do some sort of staggered or rollout. Um, so not all 28 libraries have to go live on the same day. That said, when we're deciding, you know, what are we going to do? Like, when is when is that first group going to go? Um, I do feel like we should have some decision from governing board ahead of time. Like, is it just when a simple majority says, uh, yeah, it's fine, we'll go when it's our turn? Or if like a smaller amount, like if a third of the libraries really want to go live, like, is that enough? And we'll let them go live knowing that our, our payments are going to start um, and then let others kind of come on after that. Um, so another issue is you all have very different levels of configuration and branding and customization in PowerPack. Um, and those options are not all gonna be available um, when we are going live. Um, again, with, this is iterative development. So just like with Leap, um, you know, Leap can't do everything right now, but they're constantly adding more features. So the list of things that, the list of features that Innovative has for like consortia general availability is robust and functional, but it is not as fully featured as PowerPack. It's just different. Um, so I do think there will be some hesitancy amongst certain libraries, and I, I could not tell you who they are at this time, um, with, you know, well, what, how can I make it look? Is it going to match my branding? So we'll be giving you regular updates on, on all of those features over the next several months. Um, so I'm happy to be flexible with libraries as we're going live, keeping in mind that payment starts automatically or with the first library. And the other thing to keep in mind is we don't, we don't want to be supporting PowerPack forever. Um, for one thing, um, our comprise pay, our comprise subscription will only work with PowerPack. Um, Vega will be using PayPal. So if we are running PowerPack and Vega, we are essentially paying for two fine payment systems, um, which you know doesn't seem super worth it. Um, so those are all considerations. We don't have to have a decision on this today, but I wanted to put these ideas out to the group so you know you can kind of be thinking about them as we get more information on features and are able to show you more robust demos. Um, so at this time, we recommend um, on page 14 of your packet, option two, a specific number such as one third or one half of libraries must be willing to go live before um, any library can go live. And then we have phased rollout after that. Um, but as I said, we'll continue to monitor the roadmap and share those updates with you. Um, and if things look like they're gonna get pushed back or changed or anything, we will let you know. Um, I also wanna clarify again that the, all three years of our Vega Discover contract, our initial contract, will be paid for out of the development fund. So nobody's fees will see a change due to Vega in years one, two, or three. Um, so while some libraries, you know, will be getting the product before others, nobody is like ponying up extra at this time. 
Any questions? I have a question. Um, have we looked at other discovery layer products um, and or will those will those be looked at before we decide on a contract? Um, we are like regularly uh, aware of them. We have not done like an RFP process, but we are monitoring like what's available on the market and you know what potential pitfalls are. Um, our pals over at Swan are working on um, an open source product. Um, I know that there are fans of Biblio Commons out in in the world. The market is pretty small for these products. Um, like there aren't that many choices. Um, if we're able to, to use a, like a natively designed product that meets our needs, I feel like that is an optimal solution um, in terms of support and maintenance. Um, so we are not planning like a full investigation of other tools prior to this decision. If governing board says, we don't like Vega, let's keep power pack. The next step could be, do we want to look at something else? Um, but I think using the, the natively designed product as our default is um, a good strategic option. Re Rebecca, I've got a question. What is the staff's ability to um, accelerate the phases? I mean, how fast from a support perspective could we all roll on to this? What, once the product is developed? Or yes. how, yeah. Um, we don't have a ton of information on that yet because no consortia have rolled out on it yet. Like the, it hasn't been, been done yet. Um, but in talking with Innovative, the big um, time component is really gonna be training. So the amount of training that CCS uh, needs to do for your members um, and you know how we choose to approach that will really impact how long it takes to get each library out. The actual setup and configuration, most of that work is done by Innovative, so it's pretty light on the staff side. Um, and then we, we did kind of press Innovative, we're like, well, do you care if we all go at once or if we go separately? And from their perspective, um, you know, they recommend we go in phases because they think it will be easier on us, but there is no technical reason we couldn't all go at the same time. So it would just be training. And in terms of training, Deborah and I talked briefly about this. We are planning to do um, some webinars and maybe some asynchronous training um, by the end of this calendar year. So people are like getting used to it and seeing the product and then doing live training after a governing board decision. Um, and what that live training would be more in depth. There will be some admin options for libraries um, or some, there's some staff login stuff that happens in Vega. Um, so we'll wanna make sure that uh, library staff are all trained on that before we go live. So that's the, that's the big time component for a rollout. Thank you. And, yeah, I, yeah, I've got a question about, or, or just a, a concern to express, and that is um, we have, you know, if, if there's a possibility that it's going to be a rollout next spring, um, a little less than a year from now, we may only be halfway through our existing contracts with Comprise for equipment and maintenance going on to Comprise. And for libraries where that was a major investment, um, that certainly may be one of, the, um, one of the things that's gonna make them reluctant to jump. Yeah, so our, um, our Comprise, the group Comprise contract for um, online payments is, around the same timing uh, as our ILS contract. So we'd be about between two thirds and three quarters of the way through that contract. So it's not like right at a renewal period. Like it would be, that would be renewing um, like April, May. So it does depend um, on, you know, when we're rolling out, like how that works. If you're using Comprise in your library for other things that will not be affected. You can continue to do that. Um, it's, this is only related to um, credit card payments through the PAC. 
So if you're doing point of sale or self checks or anything like that, you'll continue to use those resources in your library as long as you want to. But we would no longer have one solution that addresses everything. Correct. Correct. You would have a separate provider for online payments. I do not know why Innovative made PayPal their exclusive um, tool for online payments through Discover, but they did. The good news is the actual PayPal, like we pay like $17,000 a year for that comprised gateway. Um, that PayPal gateway or like solution is included as a, as a member or as a, as a process, a merchant, I guess, you'd still be paying like per transaction fees on credit cards as, as you're already doing, but CCS wouldn't be incurring an additional cost like to PayPal, like we do for Comprise. But you're right, it will be different in, if you have different systems. Okay. Right. Yeah, so I just, I wanted to remind everyone, because this is like a very unique thing that we're doing here, right? This is very like off the beaten path from anything that we have done before. Um, as someone that was on the committee that chose Biblio Commons the first time around, I'm still like, like still really enjoy it. So, um, but for like the goal of this as a development partner, yes, is to look at this like overlay project, but the, the deeper goal here is for us to be able to give substantive um, direction to an ILS on how we can shape a product, which as all of us know, having gone through probably multiple ILS searches and overlays and OPAC searches is a frustrating prospect because there are so few projects, so few prospects. And so this is really like, it isn't gonna be a perfect thing. There are gonna be annoyances. It is gonna be uncomfortable and probably not exactly what we want. The goal here isn't to find the perfect product for us. The goal is for us to be able to have a really strong voice so that hopefully we can build a product that we actually really love down the road and that can continue evolving as we evolve, um, which I think is a very different way, right, of coming at this than we have ever before. And that's, it just, it requires, like, I have to keep kind of shifting my mind, like, oh, PayPal, like, like, oh, that's annoying. But, but it's like, oh, but wait, okay. I have to like think that the, the goal of this is to ultimately provide the best service to our patrons, but it might mean that in the interim, we have to suffer some discomfort so that we can provide that input to get us to that ultimate goal of providing a much better product. If I like, have understood everything that we've talked about with this over like the past year. That's a good perspective, Kate, thank you. Um, kind of along those lines, I will point out that um, Pinnacle is the, uh, at this time, the only other consortium development partner with, um, with this product. So when they are like, well, how do consortia work? It's us and in Pinnacle telling them how it works, which is great. Um, what we've seen a lot, um, what I've seen, you know, at SWAN, at CCS, just in the world, um, there's a lot of different ways that consortia work and ILS vendors tend to have like a very specific idea of how that is. And our sort of diversity and individual agency of each library is relatively unique and it's extra complicated. So to be able to be working with them at this stage and saying like, okay, but like, we need to be able to customize this at this level and this at this level, but like administer it at this level and get stats at this level, um, I think is really gonna be beneficial for us and other consortia down the road. Um, but yes, it is iterative development and it's not gonna be perfect out of the box. And there are gonna be some, some things that you know, may not be possible right away, but it is an exciting opportunity. And I'm, I'm glad we're going down this path and I hope that we can work with Innovative to make it a product that's gonna work for us. And the good news is that we are very good at voicing our discontent with things. So um, we'll be able to provide Innovative with lots of feedback, so much feedback. Other questions, concerns, comments on the partner program? Okay. 
Okay. Then let us move on to this new topic of a thing we've never heard before. COVID <laughs> um, we can't get through a meeting without getting there. Um, there is a, uh, a new recommendation from Rails to no longer quarantine or they are lifting their quarantine requirement. Um, and, and since CCS has decided that we would follow the Rails recommendation, um, we need to discuss how we intend to implement that um, for our libraries here. So um, Rebecca, was there anything that you wanted to say about that? Um, yeah, so when I was originally working on the packet and adding this kind of question in, um, we definitely had some had heard from some circ managers that libraries were continuing to quarantine or were planning to continue a quarantine period. So, um, so then I said, all right, well, we need to go to governing board and see if, you know, we're going to require everyone to stop quarantining or let libraries keep quarantining if they want. Um, since that time, the circ group has met and it seemed like there was a lot less um, chatter uh, about like concern around stopping the quarantine period at that meeting than some of the individual emails and tickets that we got might have indicated um, that, that we would hear. Um, so CCS does recommend that we, we all stop the quarantine. Um, from a sysadmin perspective, it makes more sense for us, but also just in terms of, uh, and more importantly, in terms of facilitating resource sharing um, to be able to get material in the hands of patrons faster, I know has been a, a struggle for a lot of libraries throughout the process. So we are, you know, our recommendation would be that we clarify today at governing board that, that this means no library should be quarantining material. Um, and then CCS will adjust um, some settings in bulk um, on Monday to give, or Tuesday, the 19th. Um, they will update some of those settings in bulk on the 19th to um, give libraries a chance to update internal messaging or you know, make any plans they need to do. Um, and then there are some other changes that we'll need to make on a library by library basis that may or may not affect each library. Um, so we'd work with libraries on that throughout April by request and then follow up with any libraries that we think might want setting changes, but we haven't heard from in case they forgot um, that they made changes. So that's our recommendation. I'm happy to take questions and Deborah's here who knows more about the settings uh, than I do as well. Thank you, Deborah, for existing. Is there anybody concerned or hesitant about ending quarantine? Is everybody ready to end quarantine? Lots of nodding heads. I am, I, but I do think I think doesn't Catherine at Lake Forest, hasn't she maintained longer quarantines? And, and I think she was she was doing that. And she's not here, so, and I can't say for certain, but I, I seem to remember that she has maintained quarantine longer than, than the rest of us. So she might be one, but I, I don't know if you know, she's not here to, to speak for herself. But. Have you heard um, any according to the Richard spreadsheet, she was doing three days. Okay, so um, closer in line with where we all were after the 24 hour recommendation. Right. Oh, wait, no, wait, sorry, sorry. I had it on like bluff. Um, uh, yeah, seven days, seven days. She was, do but, but we made a decision. She can do whatever she wants, you know, but it shouldn't well, for her returns, but in terms of delivery, she needs to comply with what we've already made a decision on unless we choose to change that decision, which it doesn't sound like any of us want to do because the science is very clear mm -hmm. that this is not an issue. Can I ask uh, as far as the settings go, what the, if this means that the, um, for those of us who are fine free and have a certain blocking period, is that still per library or was that something that was done for all of CCS when we started quarantine in the first place where we extended out to like 21 days for our library before you were blocked instead of 14? Um, or is any of the billing going to go back to a different schedule? 
Um, the long overdue block for libraries that are fine free, uh, those libraries individually requested extensions on that period. So we'd work with libraries to individually move back to two weeks or whatever that value was. Um, as you felt comfortable. When it comes to system-wide settings that we would be changing, um, Rebecca did include a list, I believe, in the packet. It would include reverting the first overdue notice threshold back to three days from seven days, um, as well as removing language from our overdue notices and pre-overdue reminders that reference a quarantine period and system-wide changes we made to the catalog, again, referencing a quarantine phase. Okay, thanks. Any other questions or concerns? There is a, a potential action listed in the packet um, that all CCS libraries must stop the routine quarantine of delivery materials effective April 15th. CCS staff are directed to update settings as outlined beginning April 19th. Um, do we feel comfortable making that motion and making that change or this is Brian. I'm feel I'm comfortable making that motion. So so moved. Okay. A second. Jeannie, a Palatine second. I think make that in there before you, Jeannie. But it's good to know everybody's jumping. <laughs> Question: Do we need to do this though? Because we've already voted that we're going to follow the rails. So is this a superfluous motion for something that we've already decided? Can we not just direct Rebecca to say we affirm the decision that was already made and we're going and we want you guys to start changing things. Do we need to have a formal motion that seems unnecessary and makes me quest then it seems like we're then saying we can't trust the decisions that we've already made. I would disagree with that. It just makes it at this point in time, we are saying as of this date, we're doing this and we're changing language as of such and such a date. So mm -hmm. it's very clear. Here's the decision. Here's the dates. Right. I think, you know, change when we were following the rails recommendations before changing the number of days of quarantine, um, I think that our previous motion supported that so we could be nimble and, and respond to that. But I think um, ending quarantine altogether, um, I, I don't think it hurts to make a, a separate motion and uh, take action on that just to solidify the decision. I mean, I want it ended, so... Whatever. This language, it says that all CCS libraries must stop the routine quarantine. What are the consequences for a library that doesn't want to stop their quarantine? Maybe yeah. other you're going to get overdue notices when their stuff is still sitting in quarantine. Yes, that people get overdue notices when their stuff is still sitting in quarantine. Um, they would get an email from me. It would say governing board decided this. As a member of the board, we expect you to comply. Um, like everything, Scott, uh, our enforcement mechanisms are limited, but as a member of the board, uh, the benefit of having everyone on governing board is that as board members, it is your responsibility to uphold the decisions of the board, so. So there's no brute squad that's gonna show up? I mean- No, it's a, strong, it's a sternly worded email from Rebecca. I mean, that's gonna motivate like that. I mean, I'm will. very. She's sure. going to be a mother soon, so that's really going to carry a lot yeah. of yeah. impact. Yeah, I have mom strength now. So, and I had um, a lawyer on my board for many years that worked on policies, and his statement was, "When you say shall, there is no wiggle room. We're not saying shall. We said must." Can I clarify, uh, or can I ask to have this clarified though? This is only applies to materials that are delivered through, through rails. It does not include uh, materials that are returned by patrons. That's correct. If someone wanted to quarantine material that was returned, their own material that was quarantined, that was returned by patrons, they certainly can do that. They can do whatever they want with their materials. But for material that's moving back and forth um, through delivery and or is not owned by that library. Thank you. But their patrons will get overdue notices. Yes. In three days they'll be yes. generated. So if somebody quarantines materials for three days, um, their patrons will be getting overdue notices in, in time with when those materials will be checked in. Correct. Which may be a headache that is a motivator. I won't say how motivating that is compared to Rebecca's email, but. You know, I just. I'll say it. 
Um, Heidi here from Highland Park. I just want to uh, play devil's advocate because I, I think I had seen uh, a, a few other local libraries um, re, re, like continuing to do a quarantine based on the request of their of their staff. Um, so I just want to verbalize that and just again invite anyone to speak up. Um, you know, besides Lake Forest, if if there is something else that we should be considering, because I, I think that's that's kind of a tough situation, and I just want to acknowledge it. Well, staff may be saying that, but a couple days before Rails um, made the statement, there the CDC came out and made the report that you know, based on their study over the year and findings, et cetera, that transmission of the COVID virus through contact with surfaces was very, very small percentage. And they are not even recommending all of the cleaning protocols that you know we were all dealing with le even last summer and fall. So I, based on what I heard coming out nationally, then I was not surprised at all when Rails you know, came out and said that they were lifting the quarantine. So while mm -hmm. I understand that individuals have concerns, I just keep referring back to, well, here's what the science and the health officials are telling us, this is what we're going by. 100%. I sent, I sent out an email to all my staff and it had links to four different articles. The CDC one I actually put at the bottom because that one I thought was least compelling um, for why we should uh, no longer quarantine materials. If anybody wants that, I can share my email with you. We haven't gotten any staff pushback and I expected it from some people. Okay, so, so motion on the table. Do we have any more discussion or are we ready to take a vote? All right, I don't hear any more discussion. So we're gonna go with the vote. Beth, can you please call a roll? I'll start with Indian trails. Yes. Lake Forest, Lake Villa. Yes. Lincolnwood. Yes. Lake Henry. Yes. Garden Grove. Sorry, Pam, I didn't catch that. Sorry. Yes. Thank you. Right. Mount Maine. Yes. Northbrook. Yes. Valentine. Yes. Park Ridge. Yes. Prospect Heights. Oh yeah. Round Lake. Yes. Wilmette. Yes. Winneka. Zion. Yes. Algonquin. Yes. Cary. Yes. Crystal Lake. Yes. Des Plaines. Yes. Ela. Yes. Evanston? Yes. Fox River Valley? Yes. Fremont? Yes. Thank you. Glencoe? Yes. Glenview? Yes. Grays Lake? Yes. Highland Park? Yes. And Huntley? Yes. Okay. All right. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you all. Um, and then we had also reports and data. Was there anything from that you wanted to um, share, Rebecca? Um, I actually didn't send it. So um, I will just tell you very briefly, Bob has been going through some data um, and putting together some sort of like year in review of COVID stuff. Um, executive committee provided me with some very helpful feedback on potential improvements that I have not sat down with Bob and gone over yet. So Bob did his part and now I am delinquent. Um, and I was like, oh, I'll just do it later. And then I had time off and Bob had time. Anyway, um, so Bob and I are still working on that, um, but we will send it to you via email as soon as it is refined um, and ready for your consumption. Essentially, it's just looking at a lot of different metrics over the course of the year um, and trying out some, some more graphic presentations of data rather than the kind of tables that you get in web reports. Um, so we'll be sharing those uh, once I get my act together and work with Bob as appropriate. So, sorry. All right, that's okay. Lots of other things on your plate too, so. 
We will look forward to those reports. Thank you very much. All right, um, speaking of reports, here we are. Um, President, I will just say thank you for uh, making it a great year as, as wild as it has been. This is my last governing board meeting as president. So uh, next time the meeting will be run by Pam. So um, thank you all. Um, Secretary, Diane, do you have anything? No report. Okay, Mick. Uh, I'm neglecting to say um, thank you to all the people who were part of the, the audit or the budget and finance committee meeting. They all did a great job this year. Otherwise, nothing. Okay, and Rebecca, do you have anything more for us? Um, we have a number of project updates in the packet in my report. I'm happy to take questions. Um, and then I am uh, in packets moving forward slash uh, in the template I give Deborah. Uh, we'll be labeling um, projects with the associated strategic initiative just to keep our strategic plan at the forefront. Um, and I just wanted to uh, point out that 23 of our libraries are currently fine free, um, which is just such a huge change from just a few years ago when we had three fine free libraries. So um, we're happy to continue working with libraries as needed um, to make those changes and it's just such an interesting trend to see nationally and locally. So um, I'm happy to take questions on, on anything in the packet. Anybody have any questions? Okay. Um, committees and groups. I know we, we have heard from our uh, from three committees already today, and then our minutes in the packet. Um, does anybody have any questions? Anything um, additional that you want to report? Any anything you want to say? Okay, Rebecca, is there anything else that you have before the meeting ends? Um, we will be, or I will be sending out um, a call if anyone wants to change their committees for next year, um, so we can get those committee rosters in place. Um, we will try to be light on committee meetings in the first quarter. Um, we will have a budget and finance committee meeting to look at those metrics that we talked about earlier for rebate distribution. Um, but other than that, uh, we're hoping, I'm hoping to leave Deborah a very light slash non-existent committee meeting schedule for Q1. Um, but just think about if you would like to um, swap any committees. Uh, we have a lot of people on long range planning this year because we were doing a, a new plan. Um, so I'm happy to keep you all there, but there will be a lot less work. We'll be just sort of monitoring the implementation and working on implementation year two. Um, that's all I have. And thank you to everyone uh, for a good year of quarterly meetings. Yeah, it went well. I think it, I think this structure really went well. Sarah, so thank you. I Sarah, yeah. thank you for serving, by the way. Thank you for your- oh, you're your, very welcome. Yeah, I wanted to add that in. I know, Sarah, when I was um, encouraging you to be incoming president, you said only with the agreement that it would be no major changes. And then as COVID was happening, I thought, oh, well, I, you know, that's not anything anybody could predict. So right. thank you for shepherding us through that time. Yeah, well, I, you know, major credit goes to Rebecca. Um, for anybody who has not yet been president, who is thinking about being president, um, I will say that Rebecca makes the job pretty easy. So, so here, here. So, all right. I've heard that. If we have nothing else, then I will declare this meeting adjourned at 1110. Way to be Good job, Sarah and everyone. Thank you. <laughs>